Hi everyone, today I'm going to show you how to use Secure Copy or SCP in order to move files from a remote computer to your local one and then back again. This video is assuming that you're running either some version of Linux, maybe Ubuntu, or running Mac, Mac OS X in this case. This video is also targeted towards Clemson's ECE273 assembly language programming lab, where in class we work on our assembly files, we edit them either using gedit or xcode, and then sometimes we don't get it done in class, so we need to work on it from home. But what I'm going to show you today is how to copy them to your local machine, that way you don't have to use an editor in the terminal, such as Pico, Nano, VI, or Vim. Okay? So, let's get started. We first want to open up two terminals. I have one, and there's my other one. Okay, the terminal on my left here, we're going to use that as our SSH terminal. And the one on my right, that's going to be our SCP terminal, our copying terminal. Okay, so let's get started. On our left, we want to SSH first into the machine we want to go to. Now, for those of you on campus, this is going to work great just like it is here. But for those of you who are off campus, you either need to SSH into the access machine first, or you need to start a VPN or virtual private network with campus. On a Mac, you can either do that using the built-in VPN client, or you can download Cisco's. Okay? So considering I'm on campus now, this will work just like it is. So SSH, your user ID, our riser in my case, at Apollo, anywhere from 0102 all the way up to 16.ces.clemson.edu. Okay? And enter. And now we'll ask for your Clemson password. Okay, now if you have not done this before, then you may be prompted to accept a security certificate. I got my password wrong in this case. Just say yes if it prompts you for the security certificate. Okay, so now it's let me in. And I can see down here I'm logged into Apollo 1. If I do an LS, I can see my files just as I left them in class. Now I'm going to show you how to copy over uh, Lab 1, so we'll just do that as, a, as an example. So I want to change directories into Lab 1, and I can do an LS again. And I can see my files. So here I have my assembly file, my .s file, and here I have my C driver file. So say you've worked on it in class and you didn't quite get done, and so you want to work on it using a graphical editor on your own machine. You can, using your other terminal window, copy it over using SCP. SCP looks just like it sounds. SCP. Okay, it takes two arguments. The first one is your source, the second one is your destination. The source is this assembly file on the Apollo machine. So we have to log in with our user ID at apollo.ces.clemson.edu. So, so far, it looks really similar to SSH. The only difference is we want to specify which file or files we want to grab. And to do that, you use a colon. So after the address of the machine, you put colon and then quote the files you want to grab. So in this case, it's lab1, but it's in the lab1 folder, slash assembly file, wizard underscore 273 underscore all underscore one dot s, end quote. Now that would grab just that one file, but what if you wanted to grab more than one? To do that, you can just put a space after the first one, do lab1 slash lab1 drb dot c, end quote there. That command would grab both your assembly file and your driver. But for this example, I'm just going to grab the assembly file. Just wanted to show you how to grab more than one, though. So that's how you would have done that. But I'm going to grab one file. I'm going to grab, here's my source on the Apollo machine, and now I want someone to put it. Now, for my example here, I'm going to put them on my desktop so you guys can see them pop up. It's users, rizer, desktop. Okay, and that's going to take my assembly file, ISER 273 all one from the Apollo machine, and put it onto my desktop. So I hit enter, enter my Clemson password again, 
And you can see there, it copied it over 100%, and it just popped up there on my desktop. So what I've done is I've copied my assembly file from my Lab 1 folder on the Apollo machine to my local desktop. All right, so now that we've done that, let's go ahead and open it up and make some changes. All righty, here's my file. And let's just say I want to take out those two comments underneath my name. That's the only change I want to make right now. So let's make the change, save it. And now we want to move it back over again. So we want to do SCP, but remember I said it's the source followed by the destination. In this case, we want to move it from the source, which is my laptop, to the destination, which is the Apollo machine. Therefore, our arguments are kind of switched around, right? So our source is users, riser, and desktop, and it's the assembly file I just put there, and there it is. That's my source, and my destination is your user ID at apollo.ces.clemson.edu, okay? And now, you want to specify the folder you want to put it in. So colon lab1 in this case, because I want to put it into the lab1 folder. All right, now you don't need to do quotes for that. Notice the difference. And now I can hit enter. You'll ask me for my password again. Remember, this is your Clemson password, not the password for your laptop or desktop. And enter. And so you can see it copied it over. And now remember, when we first moved it over here, I had those two comments underneath. Now I'll show you over here where they're also removed. So here's where I catted it. And you can see there's only one comment there, which is my name. The other two are gone, just like I removed them on my, on my laptop here. All right, so assuming you've made all the changes you need to make and you're in the right directory, I'm still in my lab one directory, I want to test it now on the Apollo machine, gcc-m32. One, my driver file, followed by my assembly file. And it compiles, and it runs. There we go. So that is how to copy files back and forth from a remote server to your local machine in order to edit your program files using a graphical editor. Now remember, if you prefer to use an editor in the terminal, such as Pico, Nano, or Vim, you can do that simply by SSHing into the machine and then running it, running the editor of your choice on the file, okay, and doing all your changes there. But I thought I'd show you this way just to make it a little bit easier and more like we've done in class. All right, I hope you find this helpful. Let me know if you have any questions. Thanks.